more planes flying overhead. Good morning, this is Bill from Auto Europa Naples and today I have this 2013 Mini Cooper Cabriolet. Uh, you know, the Mini Cooper has probably been the most successful of the retro cars. It came out, uh, well, it kind of preceded them. It was, uh, you know, at the beginning and, uh, you know, frankly, this car wouldn't have existed without the Miata I did earlier. I'd like to point that out, something I never mentioned in that video. Uh, the Miata was responsible for so many cars that followed, and this is one of them. Uh, you know, of course, the original Mini Coopers were a cult classic. People loved them. There was that movie where they were running around everywhere. And, uh, and just, uh, you know, people went nuts. So, uh, you know, BMW decided that there was a market for a refreshed and renewed version. And they built one and they became very successful. Uh, you know, they've sold a ton of them. They've now expanded the line to include all kinds of ridiculous things that were never intended, like, you know, big giant wagons and SUVs and such, but well, big and giant in the mini world. But uh, the Cooper, you know, coupes and convertibles are truly the most modern and lovely expression of that retro feel. Uh, this is now the second generation one. They made some, you know, much needed improvements on the car. Uh, but it is essentially just a very simple, lovely, uh, light and nimble way to get around, to have fun transporting yourself to work and back. Uh, you know, it's just an absolute joy to drive, to look at, you know, you're, it's really its own thing. Uh, this one is finished in chili red outside. It's got optional black uh, twin spoke alloys, very, very attractive. The bikes, uh, black stripes, you know, making it racy. Uh, it's got a full power top, which is pretty neat the way it operates. It's a little pipe there at the back. How stubby this thing is. Uh, you know, the wheels are pushed way, way out towards the bumpers uh, to make it stable, to give you more interior room. Uh, it's got a nice wide track and it really handles well. Uh, it's just a, a fun car to tool around. Uh, you can see the lovely chrome touches on it, the mini badges, the Cooper badge, uh, you know, the nice uh, thick plastic around the rocker panel and wheel wells, uh, of course, to prevent rust. Man, this thing's Florida, so not an issue. But, uh, you know, it's a very, very handsome car if it's your thing. I mean, it's a, it's a little bit of a love it or hate it thing. Some people are going to look at it and go, oh my God, get me out of here. But uh, other people look at it and say, man, uh, you know, that is a thing of beauty. Those huge cool headlights that sort of mimic the original mini lights, the grill, uh, you know, the air dam at the bottom with the fog lights. Uh, you know, it's just a neat looking piece. I even like that big silly antenna they ran off the top of the windshield. All right, let's get into it. So uh, here in the back, uh, we're going to find a trunk, which is actually pretty useful for uh, what is essentially a subcompact car. Uh, those rear seats do fold down, so if you need even more room, you can get them. But, uh, you know, a week's worth of groceries, a trip to Home Depot, you're going to be able to fit some stuff in this thing. Uh, so it actually becomes a pretty practical four-seat convertible. You see it also has the little pull tab for anyone who's stuck inside the back. I don't think they, yeah, they don't like the town car. They give you that little image of the guy leaping to safety. You don't get that on the Mini. Have a look under the hood. Uh, this was something that I'm thankful for. In the original minis, the pull handle was over on what the British would call the driver's side, which is the right, which, you know, took me ages to find. And then you had to be some kind of a, a gymnast with your fingers to be able to get in and find the hood release. So they've made that a little bit better on this one. Uh, they also, in the original versions, had the headlights go up with the hood, which was kind of cool because you could signal airplanes in a, you know, World War II bomber type situation, but it's also ridiculous to put that much weight on the hood struts. Uh, anyway, this is a very free revving, very nimble, very lovely 1.6 liter four cylinder. Uh, it, you know, it's not big on the, again, Miata level, about 125 horse out of it. Uh, this one's made it to a, a six speed automatic, which shifts nice and uh, is uh, fun to bang through the gears. And it is just, again, you know, joy of driving. It's not about, you know, breakneck speeds or throwing your head back. Uh, it's about throttle response, handling, momentum, and, uh, you know, pushing the car down the road at its limits, which you can do uh, at low speed. You don't have to break uh, traffic laws to have fun in this car, and that's part of the joy of owning it. I've absolutely wounded myself. <laughs> All right, so I've completely wounded myself on a 
sharp edge around that headlight, so hopefully it won't bleed over everything. Uh, but let's have a look inside. First of all, the back seats are quite usable. Uh, you know, I mean, obviously these front seats are all the way back, so you'd have to have peg legs to fit in there now. Uh, but you could move them forward a little bit, just enough to give the rear guy some foot room, and then he's got plenty of body room to go with it. And of course, these seats uh, do fold down very nicely and give you access to the trunk and more storage. Hop in. Everything in this thing is just so uniquely mini. The door panels you can see are uh, this crazy ovoid design. Some of them get into having real weird trim and body colors and other colors and fish scales. I'm glad this one is a little conservative inside. I'm not a giant fan of the overwhelming uh, explosion of interior colors and patterns and other things. So, uh, quite nice. I love the little circular door pull, uh, you know, a couple of speakers there, your mirror controls, little map pocket to put stuff. Hop in. I'll show you a few more things. Actually, the sun's coming out, so I'm going to pull over to the side where we got some shade. Otherwise, the camera just goes nuts. Alright, so anyway, to start the thing up, you put the key in like that, press start, stop, all comes to life. Here's our shifter, and let's just pull over to a shady spot. Okay, so we'll go through a few things that are, to me, kind of fascinating on a Mini. Uh, number one is the most useless feature that has ever been put in a motor vehicle, and that is this, uh, uh, whatchamacallit, the uh, top meter, topometer, I don't know what they call it, but it's ludicrous. What it does is measure the amount of time that you've had the soft top down. Uh, why they've done such a thing, I don't have a clue, but they have. <laughs> I mean, it's just ridiculous. Uh, it's a little pod that shoots up the bigger uh, tachometer pod there. Uh, anyway, that is a distinctly unique mini feature that, uh, anyway, yeah, there it is. Uh, you got these great vents that are easy to aim and control, all very cool. Uh, they're across. You can close them with a the little twisty guy in the middle, open them, aim them. They're nice, easy vents to use. Uh, very nice uh, multifunction steering wheel here with the mini logo. Very subtle, uh, nice leather feel to it. Uh, this harkens back, of course, to the original minis. This big, giant, ridiculous speedometer in the middle of the dashboard. Absolutely enormous. Uh, it also doubles as the radio controls. Uh, you know, and it is part of that neat retro feel. Uh, down here, and again, the totally unique center console stack. You've got the CD, you've got your climate control. You've got these great guarded rocker panels, which, you know, harken to old British engineering, like out of an E-type or something. Uh, you got your USB port down there, your auxiliary input, a couple of appreciated cup holders. Uh, you got a sport mode if you want to change the shift points and the way the motor responds. You could turn off your traction controls if you want to light off the front tires. Uh, again, this great little shifter that BMW-wise can be moved over and bang your way through the gears like that. Uh, you also have, of course, a pretty standard e-brake. Uh, you got this little movable whatever the hell it is, slides back to put your switch blades in, uh, your armrest, all very nice. Uh, push button guy here for the glove box, which is sizable. Of course, we got books, two keys, and uh, nice to see an original window sticker. So if you want to pause the video, you're interested in the car, you can have a look and see what this thing has. Very, very nice. Okay, so let's run the top for a minute. To do that, uh, we just press this guy here forward. The top's going to come up from the back. See these two big uh, hook things are going to come very nicely there. And it's going to roll everything forward. A very impressive top and roll the windows up at the same time, so nice and easy. Uh, now you see these LED lights, you can change the colors of those to suit your needs. So if you like them green, you can make them green. Right now they're purple and frankly I couldn't be bothered to change them. But if you run the top back, it first stops in that position and acts as a pretty nice sunroof. And I'll show you that from outside. Look at that, absolutely lovely. Uh, and then, from there, another push lowers the windows a bit, and back it goes.
very very nice and then uh, you can run your back windows down both at once with that and your fronts with either side of those rocker switches so let me get my seatbelt on try not to get blood on anything and go for a spin Look at that, just 44,000 miles on this thing. I love the little stalks, too. I mean, everything is so uh, absolutely unique in this car. In, in a world where so much stuff in cars is the same and everyone tries to look like each other, uh, the Mini is an absolute standout. Now, you know, again, totally different feel from the Miata. We're talking front drive versus rear drive. In fact, the Miata was almost front drive. It could have been this Mini Cooper. So it's a whole different ball of wax. I mean, you get a little bit of torque steer, you get that classic front drive feel, but the suspension is incredible. It's of course independent all the way around, built by BMW, who builds a pretty damn sporty suspension. And uh, it is so much fun to throw this car around. It's like a go-kart for adults. Look at that big deep dash with the wraparound steering wheel. It reminds me of the uh, classic Saab 900, that windshield. Very, very cool. Did I say steering wheel? Yeah, see, I'm going into shock from the wound. Anyway, if we ever get through this traffic, we'll be able to go for a spin. So, let's hit the sport mode, see what that does. Uh, you know, if I were really showing it, I'd be banging through the gears manumatically. I'm just going to leave it in D, and we're going to see what happens. big rev out. So again, a total momentum car. You know, it's not about, uh, you know, setting any land speed records. It's about sort of this incredible responsive steering, the, uh, you know, the feel from the, the brake pedal, the, the throttle response, the joy of driving. It's another one of these joy of driving cars, and it does it exceptionally well. Yeah, just an absolute blast. Put on your tunes. Let's see what we got. <laughs> All right, our detailer set it to a you know, adult head. That's unusual. All right, we're gonna leave it there, and uh, that's it. So I've got the top down. I've got a lovely, cool floor today. I've got uh, blood gushing from my wounded finger, and uh, I'm getting ready to pass out. So. Uh, thank you very much for having a look. If you have an interest in this great Mini, which, uh, man, it is a lot of fun, 2013 Cooper Cabriolet, automatic, 44,000 miles, uh, just an absolutely lovely piece. Uh, give us a call, 239-298-8000, on the web at aenaples.com. Thank you so much for having a look. We appreciate it. We'll see you with the next one. Take care.